Hello, I'm Tara Ravazon. I'm the Dean of Graduate Research at Flinders University, and welcome to Vlog 39, Creating a Poster. There's never been a more exciting time to talk about the creation of a poster that is delivered at a conference. It is an innovative and powerful mechanism through which we can disseminate research. And why I particularly wanted to do this session today on a poster is because it used to be the poor relation. The poster used to be, oh right, you didn't quite make it in the delivery of a paper at a conference, oh you can deliver a poster. Well now, as it turns out, the poster has so much more energy and propulsion for the dissemination of your research, both during the conference, but also particularly after it. And the reason for this change is that we live in a visual age. One of the great scholars, the really inspirational researchers in my life, was a wonderful professor by the name of Gunther Kress. Never met him, just slightly digitally stalked him throughout the entirety of my academic life when I was a really late teenager right through to now. I read everything he writes. And Gunther Kress explained astoundingly the value of the visual in punctuating our life our universities and our learning. So I particularly wanted to acknowledge the value of Gunther Kress's work to inform and inflect the vlog that I'm delivering for you today. So digitization has transformed posters because digitization allows the poster to be stored but also to be disseminated far beyond the analog delivery and the analog placement of that poster in a conference. It also has incredible value for your professional life because it can demonstrate your capacity to distill and to communicate visually. And that has value in terms of consultancy and teaching as much as in research. So the poster, yes, has currency at a conference through its analog delivery. But I'm going to argue today that its power comes after the conference, it can literally stay with you throughout your professional life. What makes a poster so remarkable and so extraordinary is it is a relationship, an intimate relationship between form and content. And so the vlog today is going to capture both of those elements, form and content. So let's start with content. What I want you to do is think of a poster as an illustrated abstract. I'll say that again. I want you to think about a poster as an illustrated abstract. The number one priority in a poster is less is more. The worst posters, the posters that fail, have too many words. Any poster that has words more than 500 on its page, on its surface, is extreme. The dream, the aim, is 250 words. That's a great poster. You get to 300, it gets a bit challenging. So what you need to aim for is a short and a powerful title. So to get that short and powerful title, I want you to look at the abstract of your paper. Just look at the abstract. What I want you to do is pick out the most important sentence of that abstract and then what I want you to do is pick out the three most important words in that abstract. So I want you also at this early stage to consider your audience. Look at the audience that is attending the conference. Look at its disciplinary profile and perspective. Is it interdisciplinary? And most importantly, look at the level of the scholarship that is being delivered. Have a look at their website. Also have a look at their Twitter feed because the pitch or the level of a poster will be determined by what is of value at the conference. So have a good sense of who the audience is. So the challenge in a poster, I always think, is how you prioritise content. Because it's a really challenging area, if you think about it. You've got this incredibly long article, six, seven, eight thousand words, or a PhD chapter of eight, nine, ten thousand words, 
and you need to get that into a poster with 250 words. Um, how do you control that content? Well, I'm going to help you and there are three questions to enable you to control your content. This is really the rule of how you create a great poster. So I need you to answer these three questions for me. Question one, most important. What is the most important finding from your research? What is the most important finding from your research? Crucial. Question two, how can this finding be communicated visually? through the use of charts or graphs or photographs? And thirdly, what information may be better delivered verbally in terms of the presentation to the poster rather than actually being content on the poster? Most significantly, think about what you are adding to knowledge. What you are adding to knowledge is the core of the poster. So, right, we've talked about content, cool, but this is a poster. So we need to talk about form. Most importantly, we need to talk about design. The rules. Most significantly, please confirm the size of the poster required at your conference. I've seen some terrible situations where students have done all this work on a poster and arrived and it's the wrong size. So it doesn't fit in with the parameters of the conference and you're not allowed to show it. So be very clear about what their rules are. Recognize that it must be readable at two meters. So that means the font size you are deploying is 100 point for the headings and about 36 point for the subheadings. And the font selection, it's a very controversial area. Yes, you can use Arial or Verdana to Homer, Times New Roman if you have to. I often think Tahoma is a great font. So do have a look at it in terms of poster delivery. So font selection does matter. Also leave a three centimeter border around your poster, white space. Yes, it's significant and important to use dot points and to use graphs and color is important. Colour is so significant in design. What I want you to do is use a light background with dark text. You can see the challenge of doing it the other way around. Light background, dark text. Use three colours and no more. Two is often fantastic, but three colours, no more. And be very wary of red, and green. Do not put red text on blue or blue text on red. Basically avoid all yellow writing for the rest of your life and keep the background plain. You need your content to fly and be fabulous so people aren't looking at the background rather than what you're trying to convey. So as you can pick up, visuality really matters. And some of the best posters I've ever seen have used photographs well. So really think about the importance of a photograph, perhaps at the center of your poster. Also present your data in graphs, not tables. So trends become much clearer, much more quickly. Also think about shapes that may hold your poster together. And circles and arcs and arrows are used incredibly well and can make a real difference to your poster because they can hold the content together. Never underestimate the value of blank space. Space create, creates and enables the capacity for meaning. So if you think about it in terms of the spoken word, silence, matters because it creates effect and emphasis. The same scenario in visual environments is blank space. So never be frightened of blankness or whiteness or blackness that adds incredible emphasis. 
Also spend a bit of time working on how your poster is going to be affixed to the wall. Again, I've seen so many terrible situations happen where a fantastic poster has arrived at a conference and the student had no sense how it was going to be affixed to the wall. And blue tack isn't always, sadly, the answer to every question. I wish it was. My last car was basically held together with blue tack, but it's not a great way to handle the poster environment. So the first visual rule is make your title big, very, very big. Put the most important information at the top left hand corner of the poster and do feel free to use arrows. Explain how the viewer of your poster is meant to move through that space. Are they reading it left to right or are they reading it up and down? There may be ambiguity there. The way to handle that is have beautiful arrows that show how you can move through the space. So for the design, software can help you. PowerPoint is always one easy solution, but there are better solutions, I think. Publisher moves to the next level, and I think it is quite a good software program. I've designed most of my book covers on Publisher, so it's a great option. Illustrator, Photoshop's pretty good. InDesign is pretty good. For open source, you might think about GIMP or Inkscape, both are good. So when you are presenting your poster, so you're in the conference and you're speaking to the poster in your slot, this is a really significant moment of your career. What I would advise is on a card like this, have four or five sentences on that card. That is all. Four or five key points that you are going to communicate. Because you're only going to have a minute. One minute is a good length of a poster presentation, right? It is an elevator pitch. You've got to demonstrate enthusiasm, energy, power, passion, why they should care. Make a connection with the people gathering around you and know that you're going to have to do that elevator pitch five, six, ten times in an hour slot. So please make and ensure that your graphics are clear. And why this matters, and this is the trick that so many people forget, is what I need you to do is not only have your beautiful big poster, but find a way to reduce it down to A4. You might have to remove some content, but if it's well designed, you might not. So make sure you have color copies at A4 that are available in a little envelope in front of your poster and make sure you have your business cards available. Every single person who stops by your booth to look at your poster, give them the A4 copy, give them your card. Make sure the email address is correct. Remember, the value of the poster comes after the conference, not during it. So the final point that I'd like to make to you this week is that a great poster is different from a great article and it is different even from a great abstract because what you're demonstrating, such a valuable skill, the capacity to distill, the capacity to compress, to find that diamond from the mud of your research. So what you're doing is you're selling one big idea from your work. You're visualizing it. You're giving it a presence. So we do live in a visual age. I ask you to think about, consider the poster as a powerful visual way to communicate your ideas. As always, I wish you love, light and peace. See ya.